Although American aid came to us in the World War, it was too late, and for the first time England was invaded by a foreign power. Our liberties were stripped away from us, and the collaborationists now ruling the country have slowly secured power for themselves and the Germans. Not to speak about the false monarch Edward VIII, who was re-crowned by the Germans to serve as a puppet leader. But a ray of hope has begun shining for the freedom of the English nation. The underground resistance group, Her Majesty's Most Loyal Resistance, shortly known as the HMMLR, are growing stronger and stronger each passing day. Assassinations, anti-government propaganda and even bombings have all become increasingly common, all in the name of the Queen and the Nation. But the false king is preparing a speech about the matter, hoping to turn the public away from supporting us. But we, the HMMLR, will do anything to stop the speech by assassinating him. It's time to start preparing our attack. We will send in agents and infiltrate the Buckingham Palace. Sending in the agents have proven very effective and the safety of Edward's speech is beginning to plummet. And our plan is slowly coming together. The grenades to attack the king have been smuggled into London and the men and women on the ground are ready. The day has come, what happens now is up to the will of God. The grenade flew through the air and landed amongst the people behind the king rather than on his feet. He managed to hustle off unharmed, but his goonies weren't as lucky. The flame has started, even though not in the way we wanted it to, it has still started. It's time to prepare for the biggest uprising in English history yet, a full-blown civil war. Our three main leaders, Sterling, Auchinleck and Bill Alexander have three different strategies to win the war. Our biggest support is in northern England, while the biggest support of the government is in London. Sterling wants us to take over the Midlands. Auchinleck wants us to stay in the well-defended north, while Alexander wants us to move right under their noses and try to gain support in London. After a few days of disagreements, they came up with an agreement, but Auchinleck got the most out of it because of his higher leadership position. So we will begin to expand HMMLR cells in northern England. But since we can't let the government have support in the rest of England, we will have to follow Sterling's example and also expand our cells in the Midlands. We will also listen to Alexander and try to destabilize London and Oxfordshire. All these operations require serious amounts of weapons that are hard to come by for a resistance like us. Luckily we can get them through OFN countries who gladly support our cause. So we ordered a large gun shipment and it was mostly successful. With these guns we could start a second sweep of expanding HMMLR cells. With all this new support for our side, we received a flood of volunteers. This allowed us to fund Sterling's and Alexander's plans too. Sterling began using his special forces, the SAS, to carry out terror bombing and reducing stability all over England, while Alexander used his connections with exiled revolutionaries to import more weapons. A few months later, we feel ready to start conducting special operations that will in the end lead to us starting the civil war. Our first operation, Operation Stock, we will raid several old weapon depots. We assigned 630 guns to the operation and it was a huge success. The next operation, Operation Broken Telephone. The goal is to kill two of the government's most prominent generals during a meeting. For this one we assigned 700 guns and it was soon underway. 
After a day of waiting, we received the news that the operation was a success and that the two generals are dead. The two next operations, Operation Bad Morning and Operation Inspection, both failed. We failed to assassinate the traitor general Gerald Templer and we failed to kill the infantry general James Cassells. Enough with only killing generals. It's time to sabotage the government's clear advantage over us, their air capability. Unfortunately, the operation was only a half success and we only managed to wound the general in charge of the air force. Because of this, we couldn't sabotage any jet fighters. We have now failed half of our operations, but we need to succeed with the next one. Bernard Montgomery, once our greatest champion, switched side and signed a peace treaty with the Germans. He intends to take a brief trip to Cornwall to visit the German garrison command over there. It is up to us that he never reaches his destination. As this is one of our most important operations, we assigned half of our stored guns, we need to succeed. And that's what we did. He has been stopped from reaching the Germans and the government army will suffer from it. With the government's ties with the Germans weakened, we can begin to sabotage the Germans too. We will pay their lower ranking officers to turn a blind eye to our actions so that we can steal equipment from them without any consequences. And those who refuse to take our bribes will mysteriously die in car accidents and food poisonings. This will ensure chaos in the German commanding structure. We have done anything possible to ensure that we come out on top. It will soon be time for the uprising to begin. And as a gift from heaven we received news from the Reich. Hitler has died. This will surely plunge their nation into chaos. And that it did. The German civil war began between four different leaders, all wanting to be Hitler's successor. This is our chance. We declare the English nation free from the Germans, down with the traitorous government. Due to our support from the people, we have taken over territory far more south than Auchinleck had planned. As we were the ones who started the civil war, we have managed to encircle a few of the government's divisions before the war even started. So we began with destroying them and captured Shrewsbury and Coventry. The traitors have been slow to react as their army takes time to mobilize, but just as we destroyed their encircled divisions, they began attacking us. We held out with our motivated troops in most of the front, but our province closest to London had it harder. The traitors attacked from almost all sides and in the end we had to do a difficult retreat over a river. But now we are holding them off for the most part. The government forces are staging an attack on us from the city of Bristol. This allowed us to stage a counter-offensive from two tiles they weren't attacking. As the garrisons in the city were exhausted from attacking us, we managed to capture the city after only a short fight. With Bristol captured, we have access to the railway that leads to the German garrisons in Cornwall. We will use an opening in the front to hopefully catch the Germans off guard. Two of our motorized divisions quickly drove and captured the town of Tauton, effectively cutting the Germans off from the government. But as we tried to continue the offensive, the fierce SS tank divisions arrived to the area and together with the government's divisions from the other side they managed to drive us out of the city. It was stupid to initiate a conflict with the Germans. We have to defeat the traitors first, then we defeat the Germans. So we will turn our focus towards East Anglia. The government forces in the area are weak as they have tried many times to attack us and break through to Hull or Nottingham. So this is the perfect area to stage an offensive, especially since we have two armored infantry divisions in the area. We attacked their province on the side of a river and once we had captured it we had to cross the river to continue. Luckily they didn't have any real defensive infrastructure so we managed to cross the river and capture Cambridge. After that we continued towards the English Channel and managed to encircle the government's divisions in Norwich. We destroyed them after only a short battle. 
Our morale is higher than ever since our liberation of Norwich and the government forces are low on everything. Morale, equipment and money. So if we would stage an offensive to London their whole structure would come crashing down. We began by strengthening our position in the area by attacking South End on Sea. What we didn't expect was that our intelligence would be compromised, but this didn't stop us. We continued our unstoppable offensive and after a few days we had captured London. To solidify our control of the city we also captured Oxford. The government is falling apart, we have captured the House of Commons and the House of Lords. The only state fully controlled by them is Sussex. We have to capture it and imprison the traitors before they flee over the channel to France or even Burgundy. So we launch two offensives, one from the north and one from the west. Our divisions broke through their lines and encircled the city of Reading after capturing Portsmouth. From Portsmouth we continued towards the last major city under government control, Dover. On our way to the city we found the government's leader, Alec Douglas Home, hiding in the city of Brighton together with several of their military leaders. After capturing them they officially surrendered and we have defeated the traitors. Now only the German garrison in Cornwall are left. With their tanks they try to push us back but our almost 10 times larger military quickly counterattacked and pushed them back out to the sea. Finally we have won, England is free. But we have a long way left, we have to restore our democracy. A true democracy, not one like the traitors had. And we have to rebuild our country after this devastating war. But first we have to clear unexploded ordnance and decide what to do with the old government soldiers. We decided that we shall put them to work on rebuilding our infrastructure. And now the final thing before we reintroduce our democracy is to begin the mobilization of HMMLR militias. The men are needed in our industry to strengthen it. We are now finally ready to introduce universal voting after the old government removed it. We will restore the people's trust in democracy by allowing a free press, public meeting and all trade unions. To restore a true democracy we also replaced our controlled opposition with the multi-party system. Time to mend our wounds and return England back to normalcy. We'll build new roads and we will replace our old terrible economy. Then we improved our welfare to at long last get rid of the hunger who has plagued our nation. The English phoenix is rising, our open wounds have turned into only scars. But the scars are still plaguing us. We need to put the traitors on trial. Let the Oxford trials begin. At the same time it was announced that the provisional government shall soon end. In a hundred days there will be an election to replace them. We will support the National Democratic League and campaign against the Socialist Party and the Pro-Military Party. But back to the important trials. The six judges were chosen, two from each political party. So the trials began. First, Alec Douglas Holm was sentenced to execution by firing squad for high treason of the English people and nation. Then we exiled the bootlicker A.K. Chesterton. We didn't kill him because he was still a veteran from the First and Second World War fighting for us. The next person to get their judgment was Bernard Montgomery. We exiled him too. He will live the rest of his life in shame. A group of former generals were also sentenced, but we only kicked them out of the military since they didn't show a lot of fascist sympathies. And the last people on this long trial were several former MPs like Margaret Thatcher that we just let go. The trials have concluded, England is now set to become more stable than it has for a long time. But there are still elections on the horizon. 
Luckily, our campaign has been largely successful. We have even managed to turn London from the socialists to our side. And the military party is almost nowhere to be seen. But they are right in one question. They are right that we need a strong military. Even though Speer won the German civil war, we never know if he has any plans for a second sea lion. So we will form a new English army, never another sea lion. It's time for the people of England to decide the future of our nation. The people have voted and the winner is the National Democratic League. Our campaign worked, we have won the confidence of the people. Let's go forward together. The first issue we will address now when we are in power is the royal issue. Edward VIII is still technically our king. So we decided to remove his title and make him a common man. A few days later we crowned Elizabeth II the new Queen of England. With that covered we began the tedious process of ruling a nation. Month after month passed by. We created new jobs all over the country to turn back our falling economy and finally see it grow. To export our goods we opened to foreign trade, especially with the OFN. The economic uptick allowed us to spend more money on the poor, helping them to get out of their situation. One of the ways we did this was to pass the Housing Act, making housing far more affordable. Meanwhile on foreign policy we began to push for international recognition and also applied to join the OFN. And they accepted we are now forever protected by the Americans. Back home we reformed our education system through the National Education Act. But to pass all these acts we must have a majority in the House of Commons. Our party has a majority but the party is often split. So we put substantial amount of efforts to unite it, allowing us to pass legislation easier. We used this power to pass the Lords Act, reforming the House of Lords and removing those who had been appointed by the traitors. We have managed quite well to rebuild England, our economy is on the way up and our politics have become more stable. Our darkness is no more. But we shouldn't be selfish, we must spread our light to the rest of Britain. First we shall come to the Welsh with an offer, to join us and we shall together reform the United Kingdoms. We waited for the response, soon it arrived and it came as a surprise that they rejected. But nevertheless we will press forward, reunification of the UK will not be postponed. Time to march into Wales. We began by attacking northern Wales to try their army out. We quickly pushed through and got it confirmed that their army was weak. So then we started attacking Cardiff, capturing the city in only a few days. After that we captured Swansea and the Welsh army surrendered. Welcome home, we are now one step closer to the unification, only Scotland left. But we won't try to unify with them right now, we have to deal with Welsh terrorists and upgrade our army. We upgraded it following Stirling's example by learning from his professional SAS brigades. Our army will be an elite force. A few months later we managed to lower Welsh resistance. And a few months after that we lowered it even more. We are now ready for unification with Scotland. So we will invite the Scots to a conference. But they didn't even try to agree with us. They flat out rejected any union. So we began a debate what is the best way to attack the well defended Scots. We decided to use a special forces infiltration to mess around before the war starts. And soon the Scots noticed several massive blasts. They immediately declared war on us. So it's time to unite Britain.
the United Kingdom is back. Thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.